Origins and evolution study are inseparable. One cannot exist without the other. The person totally committed to evolution postulation knows this, and they are embarrassed by it. But alas, in the middle of their struggle to keep the two separate, the high priest of evolution, Dr. Richard Dawkins, published the book, The Ancestor's Tale, A Pilgrimage to the Dawn of Life. The whole premise of the book is the connecting of origins postulation to the evolution of all living things. Origins is the when and what of the story, and evolution is the how or the process of the story of how man and all the two million other species of life on planet Earth arrived here and only here. While it is scientific fact that there can be small incremental changes over time within a certain population or kind or type of living thing due to environmental and genetic changes, it is not a scientific fact that this extrapolates to the idea that one population or type becomes another population or type over time, even a lot of time. Fish do not become amphibians and amphibians do not become reptiles and reptiles do not become mammals, for example. Once one goes down this path, and all evolutionist devotees do, then we are on the trail to origins, and again, the entire premise of Dawkins' book. The problem is that beyond the science of microevolution, evolution origins theory becomes very, very embarrassing, because now it is not a matter of how much they know, it is now the embarrassment of how much they don't know things that you must know in order to proclaim that evolution from a primordial soup to two million known species of life is fact. If it is not fact, then why is it taught as fact to the exclusion of any other theory of origins? Here is an example of what the evolutionists have admitted that they don't know. Even though there are theories for each of them, many of those theories are hotly disputed among evolutionists themselves. The truth is, they simply do not know the following. Yet with this dearth of information, they still insist that the totality of evolution postulation, which includes Origins teaching, must be taught as fact. Do you see why the evolutionist is so embarrassed to connect the little that we do know with the mountain of what we don't know? Do you see why he insists on his circular and dishonest argument that evolution and Origins have nothing to do with one another? Now you know the truth.